Golf is hard. Obviously, it is hard on a normal day, but considering some of the lies that we're going to cover today, these are some of the hardest things that you're going to find yourself on the golf course. I'm going to give you some simple solutions that you can take out straight onto the golf course and start to play shots just like this better and get your scores and your handicap down. So our ball is nestled way, way down in the rough to the point where I actually think I've lost the ball. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, we've got it. So it's way, way down there. It's nestled way down. Obviously in this scenario, we're just at the side of the green, but regardless of where you're playing it from or how far away you are from the green, you're going to play this the same way. It's not going to go far. You're not going to be able to get a six iron in there. You're definitely not going to be able to get a hybrid or a three wood into this. It has to be a higher lofted club. So it's way down in the rough. I've got lob wedge, so 58 degree for me. Anything about sand wedge, lob wedge, gap wedge, loft, anything from sort of 46 degrees up is definitely what you're gonna have to use to get plenty of height and control out of this shot. So sitting way down there, what do we need our club to do? We need it to come down quite steep. We need a steep angle of attack because that minimizes all of this material and there's gonna be less that get between ball and club. If we drag the club away and we come in too shallow, all of this is going to snag up between the club and the ball. And what's gonna happen? The ball is not gonna go very far if that happens. So swing wise, obviously thick, heavy rough, lofted club. Swing wise, what do we do to create that steeper angle of attack? A few simple things that you can do. What I want you to try and do is at the beginning, put more weight on your left leg than normal. So say for a pitch shot, you've got about 55, 60% of your weight left. Get that closer to 70. Get your shoulders really level. Don't have any tilt on them at all because that's something that could come in or could encourage a shallower angle of attack. So very level shoulders, lots of weight left. And what we also want to try and do is we want a narrow backswing Narrow basically means the hands are close to the body. We're going to go with a narrow backswing with quite a picked up, abrupt wrist hinge. So sort of pick it up, drop it down with a bit of speed. Narrow and steep. Narrow and steep. That's going to really encourage how steep that comes down. We've then got some loft that helps it get some lift, so they almost sort of offset one another. And then from there, all we are trying to do is just get the ball out. What you can also do in this scenario is you can set the face open because the chances are it's gonna hit the grass, which is then gonna twist that club face closed, and that's gonna deal off the golf club. So set that face open, narrow and steep, and try and pop that ball out. Unfortunately, that's ran on but that ball got out pretty well. That needs another shot. Let's give that another try. So it was well out, let's go. Let's go into the thick rough. There we are, sitting down. Can barely see it. So we can barely see that, but from, from both camera angles, there it is sitting right there. So from both camera angles, you're probably not gonna see this, but we're gonna give that a try. So narrow and steep. Face open, narrow. Steep. I'm going to have to land this short and let it release. There's going to be no spin here really because there's so much material between ball and club. Narrow and steep. Popped it out and it was worth the second go. So that's much, much better. That is how you're going to get it out. Narrow on the backswing. Encourage you steep on the downswing. With those setup adjustments, with the weight, with the club face, and you can start to get very little material between ball and club. Moving on to awkward lies here, we've got a really, really big upslope here. Again, this can be quite a tricky shot, trying to get the correct club choice, trying to get a good strike and a good start line is definitely what these awkward lies can throw you off of. So first of all, if we just talk strike, what we need to try and do is we need to get our shoulders parallel with the slope. So obviously if it's a really severe slope, there's gonna be more shoulder tilt, which would feel like you have more weight on your back leg. 
if it's only a slight upslope, not quite as much. I like to just have the ball position just half a ball back to my normal ball position. So if I play my seven iron in the middle, I just like it half a ball back. This is purely just because I would say in most cases on this slope, especially if it's quite a severe slope, most people are inclined to fall onto their back leg. So that moves the low point back. So if we can just nudge that ball just a fraction back, that can make us more likely to strike the ball pretty well. Staying balanced and trying to avoid that is really, really important. So trying to stay there and swing up the slope, we're definitely not going to be able to push our weight all the way forward like a normal flat slope. And what that means is the ball is definitely more likely to move from right to left. That's because our arms are probably going to outrace the body because we're not going to push and rotate onto the left side quite as well. So definitely allow for a bit more right to left. So in this scenario, we've got seven iron here. I would normally play it in the middle. It's going to go half a ball back, shoulders level with the slope, and I'm going to aim right of where I want to go. Also, what you've got to take into account, the steeper the slope, the more loft it's going to add to the club at impact. So this is quite a steep slope here. This might be a one or two club extra slope. Because it adds loft, the ball's not gonna travel as far. It's gonna launch higher. I've got seven in my hand, but it's probably going to come out much more like an eight or a nine iron. So we've always got to take that into account. Slightly to the right, shoulders level, take more club. In contrast, down slopes are going to be the opposite. The ball's going to travel a little bit further. For example, we've got 105 to the pin and it's probably playing closer to about 90. So just the reverse of the setup, obviously what we're going to do is get again, get the shoulders parallel with the slope. This time the weight's going to feel like it's very much on the left side. Because we're more likely to move and shift to the left, we're just going to nudge that ball half a ball to the left just to allow for that and then the club is also going to be de-lofted hence why the ball is going to travel further it's a little bit more likely to go to the right maybe not in this case because it's slightly above my feet at the same time but if it was just a down slope because you get quite far ahead of it that potentially holds this angle for a little bit longer and you might be a little bit more likely to go to the right so just build that into it if it's a right hand pin, just play the centre of the green. Don't go pin hunting from here, just get it on the green. But in this case, it's pretty much in the centre. So, shoulders level, ball half a ball to the left of where I normally play it. I really feel like the weight's on my left leg here. Swing down the slope. It's going to feel like a steeper swing than the previous one. Take less club, the ball's going to travel further. Oh, I thought that had a chance. So those are the adjustments for up slopes and down slopes. And finally, the one that we all hate. Ball in a divot. You've hit the middle of the fairway and you've found yourself in a divot. So it's just a horrible, horrible lie. I'm sure you all agree with me. I hear lots of people saying, I hear so many golfers just calling for a rule change on this one. I don't think you should be punished if you hit the middle of the fairway, but we've got to try and play it. Horrific lie. Some of the things that we've got to try and take into account are one, the ball is not going to travel as far. It's very difficult to strike the middle of the club face or certainly get your maximum distance out of the club. So I would always be choosing more club. If possible, if it's not too extreme, I would be trying to swing down the line of the divot because it's quite difficult to swing across it and it's certainly quite difficult to get plenty of club onto the ball. If we're swinging over this way, for example, because the fairway or this level ground is so close to the top of the ball, we would have to come down at a ridiculously steep angle of attack as opposed to swinging down the line of the divot. It's certainly a lot easier to 
hit down and get the bottom of the golf ball. So definitely try and swing down the line of the divot if possible. If it's not too far off the target, that's a good way to go. It definitely means it's easier to hit the middle of the club face as well. Albeit we're not going to hit it as far or it, we don't have to hit it right out the middle. So we're taking extra club. We're going to try and swing down the divot and we need a steeper angle of attack. We need our club to come down steeper than normal because this divot is at least a fingertip below the level of the fairway. So we need to try and swing down a bit steeper. How are we going to do that? So I'm going to put the ball back in my stance. So rather than having it in the middle of my seven iron, I'm going to put it back at least one golf ball to the right. So it's going to go further back in my stance. We look at it from the player cam here, rather than it being in the center, we're going to move it back in the stance. We're also going to lean more weight on the left leg and add a little bit more shaft lean. And again, we're going to try and swing down the line of this divot. We want the club coming down steeper, almost taking a little divot out of the divot to help get the ball airborne. So we've got that ball back in the stands. I'm going to add more weight on my left leg. So I'm going to go for about 60, 65% of weight on the left leg. Swing down the line of the divot. And I'm also going to try and rotate around this left side. Really just feel like it's a connected swing, turn to the left. And that's going to help us get a good contact out of this divot. So ball back weight to the left, swing down the line of the divot and hopefully that will result in a successful shot from this horrible lie. So the strike was good, the ball did go a little bit left, however we were swinging down that line but you've got a much better chance of striking it well by doing that. So you can see there, we took the ball first, there was a slight divot after the ball, and the distance was good. If we're giving that a second try, I'm probably going to swing down the line of the divot, I might open the face a little bit, so it almost turns it into a little bit of a fade, but still going to swing down the line of the divot. So let's do that, ball back, weight left, swing down the line of the divot, but I'm going to open the face a little bit this time. Let's see if we can fade it onto the target. Better. So that one's ended up on the green. Hopefully that can help you out with these tricky lies because we're going to find ourselves in this situation a lot. These are things that you don't generally cover in a lesson. You might not look at them on YouTube very much. You might be looking at swing, but these are the things that are going to help you lower your score. Many more videos like this to come to cover lots and lots of tricky scenarios that you can find in the golf course. Comment down below the ones that you struggle with. We'll make sure we cover them in future videos. If you find these helpful, make sure you smash that like button. And if you've not already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you're first to know about the two videos that come out weekly on the channel as always thanks for watching and see you next time